Hey guys, welcome back to my channel on business. Today's again about productivity. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get into things that I do that make my day-to-day -day life more effective when I work. So let's go through a couple of things. So first of all, it's just important to know that if you, so one of the things I bang on about is having a 64 gigabyte RAM machine because it makes everything super fucking fast. Not all of you will have access to that immediately, okay? So if you don't, it's also important to know about browser to machine compatibility. So if you are a Windows user, Microsoft Edge is known for being the fastest browser on Windows. So fucking use Microsoft Edge for many of your tasks. It will just speed things up for you without ultimately you doing anything. Now at, at, at Power Lemon as a company, we advocate using Chrome because of all of the plugins that it uses and it fits in with the Gmail, Google Drive ecosystem. But, but that is predicated upon you having a quick machine. Because if you don't have a quick machine, you're gonna be slow as shit. So Chrome is the right tool for the job, but Chrome presupposes you have a powerful machine. If you don't, use the device or rather browser that's native and best. So Mac Safari, Mac Safari Chrome is for when you have anything above 16 gigabytes. If you don't, I would just probably not use it or I'd use it less, okay? And it's if you're not sure, just Google it. What is the best or fastest browser for my computer? And you get the fucking answer from Google, okay? Or ChatGPT or whatever you want to use. So that's just like a simple thing that will make a difference immediately out of the gate, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is that you should know something that's called partitioning hard drives, okay? So if you have a hard drive, okay, what happens is that in a hard drive setup, you will have, let's say, one terabyte of memory. Now, when you load applications, your machine, your RAM, will your random access memory will search for the applications within the one terabyte of storage that you have because think about it that one terabyte contains your actual operating system so it'll be for example it would be whatever your operating system is with with with, with mac it'll be your windows 10 or edge or whatever it is okay so so or it's sonoma now on mac okay and then we'll have all your bloody applications so you've got your iMovie, you've got whatever it is, right? For Now, if you partition your hard drive and you have all of your loading applications on one part of your hard drive, it will immediately make your computer more efficient by about 25 fucking percent because it will have no longer to search your entire machine. So partitioning hard drives are also a way to speed up your computer effectivity because you partition hard drive and you put all applications on one hard drive and all storage on other hard drives because you can create virtual partitions, which means that all of your storage is on one side and then all of your running applications are on another side. So that will speed up your machine as well. It's worth figuring out how to do it. And again, you do do it if you have a RAM or a resource problem. I used to do it because I didn't have a computer a quicker computer but there's ways to speed up your machine by doing that so that's just something else that's quite important to know okay so let's just keep going into it as we talk about different tactics tools and strategies let's keep going through stuff that i do use so um most people are windows users but i'm going to talk about now then for the moment let me just continue having a look at some of the applications that i do use okay so just as i spoke to you about keyboard shortcuts it's important to know so like i know how to open up a new tab I can go to Gmail, I go into Gmail, I've got keyboard shortcuts enabled so I can press C and then with C, I will compose a new email as you can see and then I'll send Seb an email. Oh, let me go up, up. So I'm not using my mouse at all, Seb, test, test. And I did that all without touching my trackpad, okay? Because I used keyboard shortcuts. So that's something that you should learn. And then if I wanna switch tabs, I go left, I go right. If I want to switch applications, I go this way and I can even go backwards and forwards. So knowing how to do this will quickly speed up your ultimate use of your machine. So learn keyboard shortcuts because it just speeds shit up. So that's just the next thing you can learn. As you can see, when I want to send emails, I don't want to be distracted by the emails that I have. I don't want to see any of that stuff. So what I would do is then hide it so you can hide your inbox which is great for focus because noise gets in the way of the thing that you're meant to do because what happens is that you wanna work on something, but probably what happens is that you go, oh, this, look, I've run out. So, you know, you get distracted basically. So with that in mind, let's go through my extensions and talk through some of the extensions that I've got for Chrome. So use an ad blocker. 
I use Blue Dot because it records all Google meetings without the other person knowing if you don't want to. Very, very, very useful. So I paid for the annual subscription. Why? Because I want it for myself and I want to be able to record all meetings and it's just useful to have it. So then every time I have a meeting, as you can see, boom, here's my meeting, here's a transcript, here's the insights, here's the AI chat or whatever. I can send it if I want to as a link very, very useful for Google Meets. So as you can imagine, if you do use meetings, just get it for yourself. Get a, get a tool that will allow you to record meetings, like figure that out because you'll always have impromptu meetings where you might want to say, you know what, I just want to fucking record this because I want it for the future. So I use Blue Dot. There's many other tools that do that. Let's just keep going. Detailed SEO extension. So this is an SEO thing. I won't go into that if you're not in SEO. Giphy for Gmail. Very, very good. So if we go to Giphy, we'll go to here. We'll expand that tab. Let's just say I want to send someone something funny. As you'll see, Chrome plugin, Giphy, uh, LOL, search, you know, there you go. Boom. I use this in my sales emails because it creates a sense of human emotion and touch. Side note, a lot of people are too fucking corporate in their emails and it kills people because I am the decision maker of today's day and age. I'm 38, 39 years old and people talk like this and write like this personally and because we live in this world where there's a professional and personal it's all it's all fluid now it's all the same fucking thing giphy works really well so that's giphy use it it really helps ha add some humor so you know when you're sending emails you could also say thank you so much and that 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 adds so much more empathy and emotion than saying something shitty like thanks really appreciate it do you, you guys you see the difference right the only reason, or even even worse, when people just do thanks, really appreciate it, full stop, with no fucking exclamation mark. How am I able then? Can you, can you imagine? Just me having this helps me sell better. <laughs> because they're like, oh, Deepak just seems more energetic when I speak to him. And, you know, um, and then when you when you kick off a campaign, it's just shit like, you know, oh, OK, we're going to oh, are we going to kick off? And then it's like I, I send that and I say, I'll say stuff like, let's go. Who doesn't love energy? You know, that might not be the right one, but you take my point, okay? So that's Giphy. Let's keep going. Guys, it continues. I use Holo VPN when I wanna change VPNs within browser. It's like, cool, I wanna switch countries and what am I using it for? And then what state am I connecting to? So I pay for that because it's useful. I don't know how much it costs, but it's always very useful to use it when you want to. So. But that's a paid tool. Inbox when ready. That's the thing that hides ultimately the Gmail messages. So I use that really, really useful. Karma, that's for discounts. That's not that important. So inbox when ready is really important. Password manager. It really annoys me when I look at people's screens and I see that they don't fucking say passwords or they, they have it in a text document or they just use, for example, like Google passwords, like password manager. Guys, the amount of, po look, let me just, let me just show you something. If I log into here, look how many email passwords I've got saved for Gmail. 98 90 fucking eight because i want it in one place where i can save it forever it drives me nuts when i look at people's screens and i think you're still trying to find passwords you're still doing like 1999 style processes this is fucking free <laughs> and i have it all saved i get one password and i never have to look it up again because i have them all here boom so i can go to an old email account that's deprecated now but you know i can log into it and someone says can you send me a password boom i send it across off we go to the races. You can, you know, and I have it labeled to so plant sumo. So when I'm like, oh, what's the login for? Let me just have a look. What did you want? Oh, you wanted the email for plant sumo Gmail. Let me see if I, oh, boom, I've got it. Done. Send it. Ship it. Make sense, guys? Super, super quick. So just fucking password manager will save you a ton of time. The tools continue. I've got a looper for YouTube to so auto replay videos with one click. That's YouTube memory saver. Remove, reduce Chrome's memory usage by setting inactive. So I just Google best. So here's a trick. My ones might not work for you. What I do is I Google best Chrome plugins for productivity. And then I just fucking install all of them, see which ones I don't like, and I just fucking get rid of them. And then I just keep what I like. I've got a simple rule. I can understand it in five seconds. Good. If it takes more, I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered to deal with this. Get rid of it. Pretty simple fucking rule. Works really well. So you don't need to overthink it. Just install a load of plugins that are recommended. Try it and say, I, I get it. I get it. It works. Cool. Great. I'll keep it. 
and then observe if you use it okay and then you'll figure out your tool stack or system set and 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 that will help you a ton do these things you'll just be more productive and i have layers and layers of this stuff because i've compounded that investment of time because i see it being a great driver to my success so I, I i always keep my kind of brain open to is this going to save me time is that going to save me time is this going to save me time so for example just a simple example lydia who was a former employee at this company she left and she used to manage my submissions for jobs on upwork then i discovered by googling it there was an automated upwork proposal tool that automatically sends proposals for one dollar per proposal like an ai bot that takes your script and lydia used to do that inconsistently so i replaced her with a bot and hey presto sebastian because i know you're watching you are <laughs> your client who just onboarded today and i'm getting automated calls booked into my fucking calendar because i looked for a machine replacement for a process that was been executed inconsistently no fault of lydia's but she's got moving priorities and all of this type of stuff so when i when i tell you that this is a worthwhile investment you will beat most people at their role because you have strong processes and that's how i've become seemingly extremely competent in roles that i'm not familiar with because i've just got some really strong like base foundational processes for a lot of things that allow me to digest information, start up things, get things done way, way quicker than most people.